So now we're ready to talk about object moving in a circle. Part B, how do the concepts of acceleration and net force apply to objects that are moving with constant speed in a circle? We're going to look at two examples. Here's the Earth and here's the Moon. We have the Moon revolving around the Earth in about approximately a circle. And it's going to have approximately a constant speed. So let's draw some velocity vectors showing its velocity at some different times. You'll notice that I tried to make the length approximately the same. That shows that the speed is constant, but you'll see that the direction is changing. And another example, let's suppose we have a ring stand with a string attached to a little cart that has a little motor. And we turn that on, that's going to go around in a circle. So once again, when it's here, the velocity is that direction. When it's here, when it's there, these are all velocity vectors. They should have arrows above the symbol. Okay, so constant speed means that the magnitude of the velocity vector is constant. Is an object moving at constant speed in a circle accelerating? What do you think? Yes or no? Decide your answer. Well, how would we decide? It's accelerating if it has a change in velocity. Acceleration is change in velocity per unit time. Is the velocity changing? Well, velocity has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is constant. The length of these velocity vectors are the same. But the direction is changing. So, the velocity is changing and we do have an acceleration. So the answer is yes, because the direction of the velocity is changing. Question two, what direction is the net force on an object that is moving at constant speed in a circle? The force on the moon is the gravitational force of the Earth pulling on the moon. There aren't really other forces acting on the moon. And to describe that direction, well, at that moment, it's this way. At this moment, it's going to be like this. What would you call that direction? It's not always in the x direction. It's not always in the y direction. But what it's always doing is, it's always pointing to the center of the circle. So we would say that the net force is toward the center of the circle. Let's see about this situation. A buggy going around at constant speed around this ring stand is attached by a string. So the forces on that buggy this is the side view looking from behind the car. I have the normal force of the floor on the buggy, force of gravity, the earth pulling down. Those are balanced. And then I have the string pulling to the left. So I have a force of tension. These balance out. So the net force is the force of tension. So when it's here, the force of tension is pulling it that way. What about when the car is over here? Well, the string then would be at this angle, and the tension is going to be along the string. So it's going to be towards there, and when it's here, the string is there, so the force of tension is this way. Same result. F net is toward the center of the circle. And this is what happens for objects moving in a circle, is that the net force is toward the center of the circle. And depending on what your situation is that you're analyzing, your net force is going to be something different, made up of different actual real forces. So here the net force is Fg. Here the net force is Ft. So it's not F, F net, um, it's just going to depend on what's in your actual, what's happening in your actual situation, what forces go together 
to make up F net, just like we did before. Now, previously we worked with the X direction, and so we would talk about F net in the X direction, or F net in the Y direction. What are we going to call this? What are we going to call this direction? It's always pointing toward the center. Well, what we do is we call it pointing toward the center. So that is a direction towards the center. And this is the reason that sometimes people call this, they, they call these forces, they would call this force and this force a centripetal force. Centripetal just means center pointing or along that center line. So it's not an actual force caused by something. There's not an object that causes a centripetal force. It's any of these forces that happen to be pointed towards the center of your circle. So in this situation, the tension force is towards the center. So it is in the centripetal direction towards the center. And here, force of gravity is toward the center, so it is in the centripetal direction. Okay. So centripetal is not a special new kind of force. It's just a direction like x was a direction and y was a direction. So now we have the center pointing direction. Question three. What is the direction of the object's acceleration? So for an object moving in a circle, we want to know the direction of its acceleration vector. We're going to draw a diagram to figure this out because we have to find the delta v vector. So let's suppose that the object has a speed of 3 meters per second, constant speed, and let's use a scale of one centimeter equals one meter per second. So at this point here, which is at the top of the circle, let's draw the velocity vector. Three centimeters long, tangent to the path, which is the circle. Then at this point, still three centimeters long, tangent to the path, this would be some initial velocity, this would be some final velocity. We could also do this for another point. Let's pick another two points. I'm going to go straight across from the center and draw the velocity, three centimeters, or yeah, three centimeters, representing three meters per second. And then at some later point, draw another velocity vector. So this could be some initial and final for some later moments in time. So we want to know the direction of the acceleration. That is going to be the same direction as the change in velocity vector. So we need to know this. Now we found previously that the net force has the same direction as the acceleration. And we found that the net force on an object moving in a circle is towards the center. So we would expect this acceleration vector to point towards the center. But let's see if it really does. Let's see if when we subtract our velocity vectors, if we get a delta v pointing towards the center of the circle. So here's our final velocity, here's our initial velocity. Delta v, let's just focus on change in velocity, is v final minus v initial. But when we're doing vectors, we want to add the opposite of vi. So opposite of vi would be this vector, but the other direction. So there's our negative vi for this one. So v final plus negative vi. Well, that's kind of easy because this is horizontal. So just put your ruler horizontal and draw a vector three centimeters long. And then this would be the delta V. Okay, well, when did it actually have this change in velocity? The direction of the change in velocity is going to constantly be changing, and you'll see down here it has a different direction. So if it's constantly changing, when between this time and this time did it have this value? When something's constantly changing, and you calculate something for that time interval, what you're finding is the average value. And the time that it had that average value was halfway through that time interval. 
So the actual time when it had this particular change in velocity vector was right here. So I'm going to move it over there. Let's see how long it is. About one and a half. So let's move it over here. Okay, and it's approximately pointing towards the center. Not exactly because I did not measure things carefully enough. But this is the delta V and you can see that it's pointing towards the center. Let's do it again for this point here. So V final minus VI. Well, negative VI would, or the opposite of VI would be this way. So I need to add that to VF. So straight up and down, or at least parallel to this. I don't think my paper is oriented straight up and down. Okay, one, two, three. So that's the opposite of VI, which gives me my, or my delta V vector. Okay, but once again, you can see right now that the delta V is changing in direction as the object goes around the circle. So when did it have this actual delta V? Well, it would be halfway between these two points. So right there, I'm going to draw it parallel to that, and it was about, should have been the same length as before, but this uh, diagram isn't super accurate. So... Okay, so moving it to where it belongs, you can see that it is approximately pointing towards the center of the circle. So we find that the direction of the change in velocity is toward the center of the circle. And that means that the acceleration vector is toward the center. Okay, and let's think about why maybe this makes sense. The reason this makes sense is if you have the object moving along like this with some initial velocity and later the velocity is going to be like this, think about what had to happen to that velocity to change it to be like that. It had to go from being at this direction to that direction. So you can see that it had to have a delta V something like this in order to change its direction to this so that you could have VI plus delta V giving you this other velocity vector.